Welcome and thank you for joining me for uh, another episode of the Rivulus Irrigation Training Series. I'm your host, Richard Rastusha, and today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Maisie fertilizer injection systems. And I want to tell you, uh, I want to tell everybody about uh, six or seven years ago now, I installed my Maisie fertilizer injector, and I am telling you uh, the results I had in my landscape uh, were uh, visible within days. And, uh, you know, one thing's for sure is many people ask me, well, how do, how do you do this, right? Why are your plants looking so good? And I point a lot of the uh, credit back to the fertilizer injector. Uh, and then they want to know, well, how do you do it? How do you set it up? How do you dose? And uh, it starts to get a little complicated to them. And what I realized was that uh, when I was setting mine up and dialing mine in for my, uh, for my area, uh, I could call John Petroso and ask him uh, directly some questions, and he certainly provided a ton of engineering help. Uh, it wasn't that complicated, but to just be able to pick up the phone and call him and have that resource was huge for me and made a huge difference, and I realized that when I started to explain to other people. So uh, I've had John on the show a couple times now to help all of you uh, learn this path of fertilizer injection. Uh, how uh, easy it actually is and what a big difference it makes, not just for your plants, but uh, in water savings as well. And, uh, and uh, fertilizer, um, uh, not creating overuse, right? We think uh, that maybe 60, 70% of the nitrogen that's put down is wasted. So this really helps with uh, reducing that waste as well. So, and the really good news is that at the end of this, uh, John's going to give you his phone number and email address so you can also benefit just like I did from being able to call him or email him and asking him for help. So, uh, John, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us again today. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate being here. I appreciate the opportunity and hopefully I'll give you some tips on fertigation in general and, and uh, Maisie injectors. Yeah. So, John, one thing before we get into the injectors, I just, you know, uh, you're a former grower. Uh, you're up there in Fresno. Uh, you know agriculture in particular in the Central Valley very well, interacting with growers every day. Uh, we're here at the end of August. Uh, how's the season going? It's been a different year because uh, uh, the tomato guys, uh, they're, they're uh, delayed a little bit. Some of them didn't get into the ground uh, when they wanted, wanted to. Uh, but we're we're moving towards harvest. Uh, you know, uh, back east the the leaves turn and you know the sign of fall. Here in Fresno, um, when the raisins start going down yeah. uh, to dry on trays and stuff, that's that's the end of summer, the the start of fall. You know, yeah, that's the first sign. And uh, I saw some. I was I was out. Uh, the other day drive in and and I did see some some trays down on the ground you know we we don't do that as much we do more dried on the vine and that too but uh and the aunt they're shaking the almonds and and uh getting you know getting ready to go full bore, bore into uh harvest we got the tomato trucks screaming down the road every day and yeah, it feels like fall, right? That's uh, right. It's, Fresno uh, State football too. Don't forget that. Yeah, coming up here pretty soon. Uh, we're going to Purdue, and and I'm, right. I'm, a, I'm a Fresno State alum, and and this uh, my daughter was on the Fresno State dance team, but uh, she graduated last last semester, so uh, yeah. she'll be watching it from the sidelines. Right. Great school, great ag program, great football program, well, great sports program. I mean, you can't miss uh, with any of those sports, really. So, uh, so John, tell us a little bit about fertigation today. Okay, well, I'm going to kind of go into uh, fertigation and and uh, what makes a, a, a good fertig fertigation system. Um, you want it to be a, a safe system uh, uh, where you're the operator in the environment you're not uh, leaking material out out into the environment. Uh, no hazards. You don't have high pressure hoses that are uh leaking you want a good operating system um you want it uh, to be easy to use and easy easy to manage you know you don't want a system you need a advanced engineering or computer science degree to start and stop and operate you want something that's easy trouble free and and consistent 
Now, now, John, along those lines, like mine is always connected. It's just a matter of am I putting fertilizer in the tank or not? Is that how most of the systems are? Where uh, some are, uh, a lot of them. Uh, my first experience exposure to to Maisie injectors was uh, the first vineyard I planted. Uh, we put in a, a you know fertigation system, and and it was a Maisie injector, and we had little isolation valves to uh, shut off that bypass when we weren't fertigating. But uh, it can go either way. Um, and like uh, on a homeowner thing, uh, I know when Angelo set up on, Angelo Mazy uh, set up uh, at his house where he's got them on solenoid valves. So every two weeks when he fertigates, it opens up the valves and, and runs the injector. and then it uh, closes and runs normal operation till the next time you fertigate. Yeah, nice to have it automated that way. That's for sure. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it some more irrigation there. And, time. and then uh, uh, one thing you want to make sure is the product is is mixed. That's one advantage of a venturi, and I'll talk more about that. Is the internal mixing action of the uh, venturi ensures uh, mixing where. Uh, some of the uh, dosing systems, the pump, the pumps, and that uh, they need an external mixing chamber, or they're hoping or installing a static mixer in the uh, irrigation line and hoping that the material gets mixed fully and out to the to the crop. And then uh, you want a system that's reliable and that uh, is going to. Uh, give you uh, a, a long service life. And, uh, you know, you want to have a system that uh, is, uh, you're, you've got confidence that it's going to work today and next week and, and six months to a year down the road, it'll still be uh, operating properly. So, um, you know, what, uh, Things you, you need to have in a in a uh, fertigation system. You want one that uh, will uh, stop injection uh, when water shuts down. It's a nice thing about a venturi. If there's not water running through a venturi, you're not going to have suction. You're not. It's it's not going to work. Um, that's something with some of the pump systems, especially because they they might be on one ten where the pumps. Uh, on a on a you know higher horsepower higher draw and and we've had instances where uh, the pump shuts down because of a power outage, the main irrigation pump and then the power blanks back on and that fertigation pump you know one ten wow. fertigation pump kicks right on is and is injecting you know straight fertilizer into the irrigation system. And that's going out and highly concentrated and can cause some damage. So you want to have uh, some some safeguards with that. Uh, another thing is um, insurance against contamination. You want check valves on any system you have to prevent uh, water going back and contaminating your your source product. You want anti-siphon valves so it doesn't uh, pull. Uh, fertigated water back into your, your your source down into your well or back into a canal so uh, in california you know we require you have to have backflow prevention devices on the irrigation systems and a lot of states do but there are some some that don't but it's always a good, good rule of thumb to have that yeah, we had uh, Danny Martinez on uh, and you can find this uh, in uh, in our trainings um, library uh, talking about backflow prevention, and I was, you know, I used to think, uh, oh, it's not that big of a deal. How often would this happen? You know, you're really protecting against a very small uh, uh, percentage of opportunity. And then when he went through all the ways it can happen, I was like, oh, my gosh, it is uh, really important to have that backflow prevention. Yeah, especially, especially in a, in a smaller landscape situation or a, uh, a, or a smaller smaller farm that uh, they're using the domestic well for uh, irrigation of small plots and that type of thing. So, uh, you know, you can contaminate the water coming into the house. 
right you know and that type of things and then then lastly you know you want to have um you know a, a fertigation system is is one of the easiest ways to uh uh, create more value of an irrigation system and uh, you want uh, and uh, fertigation is is a, a management tool and irrigation also is is one of the ways you can really uh, affect that crop um, and as as a management practice so you want something that's economic you also want something that's economic uh, uh, to purchase and operate right know? You're not spending a fortune uh, on your fertigation system. And today, um, especially this last year, fertilizer costs have, have gone way up. Uh, you know, and we're always, even though we had a wet year this year, we're always uh, concerned about the scarcity of water and water quality. Um, we want to be aware of uh, what we use and how we use it. So, uh, the uh, excess nutrients aren't uh, being pushed down below the the uh, root zone and and contaminating groundwater or running off uh, into surface water. And you know, there's a lot of instances that they uh, talk about in the Gulf, the the dead zones and all that, and the algae blooms in the lakes and and like in San Francisco Bay and all that. Um, you just got to be aware that you want to. You want to get value out of out of the fertigation that you do, and and not not waste it. Yeah, I feel like I'm a running uh, commercial today for our old trainings, but uh, Eric Olson did a, a great training on oh, uh, yes. nitrogen and nitrogen utilization. And when he first threw out the 35 percent, I thought, wow, that's pretty bad, you know, a 35 percent loss. And he was like, no, that's how much actually gets used. It's it's a much bigger loss than the uh, than 35 uh, percent. It's 65 percent. So. Uh, yeah, so important, right? Because as you mentioned, fertilizer is expensive and uh, you, you want to be sure you're uh, applying it and getting full utilization out of it. And and that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to mention and probably mention it several times, the, the four R's of, of good fertigation is, uh, you know, the right, right time. You want to do it at the right place, the right product, and the... Uh, right stage you know so you're you know you uh you know used to be guys that are like hey i'll just do one big shot and yeah uh, then i'm good and you know um the you know the the timing might be off or you know you, you're gonna you're gonna leach that down you know so uh you really got to be aware of that and and uh you know be a good steward of of the environment but be a good steward of your money um, so for better fertigation, we want to make sure the irrigation system is, is, is in good working order, uh, good distribution, you know, for humidity, because, um, if we're, we're fertigating and, and we don't have a good DU, um, we're kind of wasting our time. We're going to have hot and cold spots and, and, uh, we're not going to get the full benefit. Uh, we want to, uh, combine uh, the nutrients into the irrigation stream uh, and get it well mixed uh, for e even distribution. Um, that's why, uh, you know, I for using a Venturi to do that. Um, and then another thing that's really important is perform a jar test. And the jar test is you're taking a little bit of your irrigation water, putting it into a jar, putting a small amount of the material you're going to uh, inject, shake it up, let it sit for 24 hours and see if anything precipitates or if it turns cloudy of that. And then you be, then you can, uh, take it from there. That way, um, you're not creating problems. Uh, you know, you don't want to have something you inject and it precipitates out, clogs your emitters, cause damage to your filters, you know, that type of thing um doing a quick jar test and really recommend doing it every time you fertigate because uh your source water um uh, the conditions might change uh if you're pulling out of the well the the uh, ph might have changed or or um 
you know, just because of, you know, the, the uh, well being drawn down or that type of thing or, or the canal and the product you're using. Um, sometimes you'll have the same product, but you might go with a different manufacturer. There's different additives in there and they react differently. Um, so it's always, always good to do a jar test. And uh, yeah, that, that's a great don't do that. And there's a lot of train wrecks because of it. Yeah, no, that's a great hint. And uh, this is what we've got a, a question coming in right now, John. I just want to remind everybody I've got the Q&A open. So if you've got some questions for John, type them in there and I'll get to them to him when appropriate. Uh, but this question has to do with uh, just the application in general um, for better fertigation. Uh, should you be dripping some fertilizer every time you irrigate or, or what are some of the philosophies around that, John? A lot of a lot of philosophies, and I'll, I'll touch on it at the very end. Um, really moving away from that big slug of of fertilizer and and uh, doing you know spoon feeding, giving giving the crop what it needs uh, when it needs it. Uh, the almond board uh, published a really great sh uh, study showing uh, uh, at what stages of of the uh, you know, trees, you know, growth and the stage of the crop, uh, what the demands are and kind of adjusting your, your fertilizer program to that. So you're, you're giving it to it right when it needs it, you know, it, uh, avail it's, uh, you know, making sure it's available to, to the plant. That's where the, the right product uh, comes, comes in play in the, in the four R's because if you're putting in a material that needs to, uh, be broken down by the microbes before the plant takes it up well then you're going to have to allow for that time to do that and maybe maybe you have the time maybe you don't maybe you need to look at a different product yeah okay good yeah thank you that's interesting okay and then another thing kind of going on that uh you need to uh test your plant material your tissue and and your irrigation water uh uh a lot of a lot of wells are pump, pumping nitrogen, and then you know, so you need to take that into account. Uh, save you know, also save you a little money. So maybe you don't have to put in as much nitrogen as you thought you did. Uh, and you know, seeing what what the plant has and what the plant needs. So uh, you know, fine tune, not just go by the calendar and hey that's traditionally we've always put in this many units of nitrogen uh on you know this date and uh you know farming by the calendar um may not always be the best way to do it right right yeah i was talking to somebody last week outside of california and they said that there's so much nitrogen in our water right now we don't have to supplement any yeah. nitrogen. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just going nice. in with the water supply and Man, we got to protect tests. against that. You know, and then, you know, avoid or over irrigation, you're wasting energy, you're wasting fertilizer, you're pushing those nutrients uh, down below the root zone where the plant can't take it and, uh, you know, creating other problems. And then uh, you should flush, flush the irrigation system after each use. Uh, a lot of guys put in a little valve uh, by the fertilizer tank so they can uh, shut off the 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 fertilizer tank and have a buck you know a bucket of water there and they can suction that in and run it through the injector and you know clean it out real quick. Um, and then another thing is uh, when you're fertigating, uh, they like you know you want to have the system. Uh, fill up with water first um, and then uh, have your fertigation event and then allow enough time uh, to uh, have this system flush out that material out of the, out of the drip lines and that um, so it gets out into the soil profile where it needs to go and not uh, help create biofilm in your drip lines you're going to have to deal with later. Yeah, so some uh, some simple common sense uh, maintenance there. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the the two most common uh, types of injection systems are are 
naturally a venturi based system works off of pressure differential water comes into the injector you have a higher pressure at the inlet of the injector lower pressure downstream that creates a vacuum draws the material in mixes it and puts it out into the irrigation system and then uh, the other other uh, way to do it is a positive placement pump where you're it's either a piston pump or a diaphragm pump where it pumps the nutrients under high pressure into the into the irrigation line and uh, in in pulses and uh, hopefully you have a, a a mixing unit or a uh, or a static mixer or something like that to uh, make sure that that uh, material is brought in uniform you know uniformly so how we got started um angelo Maisie, uh, also a fresno state grad yeah. uh was uh working in bakersfield uh working for a large farming opera uh, uh, uh outfit and and uh the uh aqueduct was coming into uh kern county uh in the early 70s, there was a lot of drip irrigation was coming along, uh, along, and there really wasn't a good way to inject liquid fertilizer into a pressurized irrigation system, especially if there wasn't any electrical power at the point of injection. Angelo, um, with a background in, in engineering, and uh, looked at the Venturi and uh, he he took a venturi and he optimized it and uh, got got his first of of many patents and uh, developed a venturi for fertilizer injector injecting and that started the company and since that, that time uh, we've we do uh, we build fertilizer injectors and and my, that's my main role in, on the ag side but. Uh, We've got in uh, mixing and, and contacting systems and, and food processing and municipal water treatment and wastewater treatment and uh, Maisie products have been shipped all over the world. So that's kind of how we started. And Angelo is still actively involved in the in, in the company day to day. So this is a this is an animation of of the injector, and we just. Uh, remove the outside and and uh, here we have water going through the injector you see you have a higher pressure on the inlet side a lower pressure downstream and the water's coming into that injector and it's narrowing down into the suction chamber there and as it does it increases in velocity and that creates a vacuum just like air going over an aircraft wing and um that creates a vacuum. That's that little uh, white triangle there. We're using that to uh, demonstrate that. And to start suction, you need about a 25% difference between the inlet pressure and the downstream outlet pressure. But the injector is most efficient. And you have maximum suction at between 45 and 50% uh, mm. pressure differential. So that's that's a big big thing. If you want to create more suction using a venturi, increase that pressure difference. So how do we do that? We can do that by restricting some of the flow in the main line using a, a pressure restricting bypass. Um, we've got a gate valve there that's cranked down, creating a little more pressure on the inlet. We've got a lower pressure downstream. We can also do that by using pressure. Uh, regulating valve or a pressure sustaining valve on the main line and building a bypass around that. See that a lot in the landscape industry. They'll, they'll use a pressure regulator to do that. We use that free energy to do that. And then lastly, we're using a, a booster pump to create that pressure dif differential. And people go, well, well, you're using a pump. Why not use a positive displacement pump? Well, with uh, a booster pump, we're using as a centrifugal pump it's less expensive, and you're only running clean water through that pump. So chemical never hits it, so you have less wear and tear. When you're installing an injector, you can do it vertically, but always make sure the water is going up and never down. Because if, <clears throat> excuse me, if uh, 
the water's going down, you, you run the chance of scavenging the injector and breaking suction. And then, um, and I'll go over this a little bit uh, again, but uh, also um, to size an injector, you can go on our website and look at our performance tables and size it that way. But you can also use our free injector selector tool. It's just on our uh, welcome page, just up the top, click on the injector selector tool, register once, it gives you a password, and then you can use a free online tool to size the injector. And I'll. I'll show you a little bit of that. Yeah, this is all very new, all these animations. This is great. We got a couple of questions coming in. If we can just take a, a minute, John, here sure. and pause. Um, uh, first question is this, um, do you put these fertilizer injectors upstream or downstream of your valves? Well, you can, you can do it both. Um, you, uh, anything downstream that's gonna create pressure differences you need to be aware of um and you know you don't want to you don't want to put the put the injector in and then have a pressure regulating valve yeah downstream uh but uh we have uh folks uh, that inject that at the filter station but then it's um uh, we also do it and have people doing it especially up in the pacific northwest uh, they like doing it right at the block valve. So oh. you have a uh, pressure re uh, uh, reducing uh, valve at the block and they uh, they build a little bypass right there. And uh, that's where they inject using using that pressure difference from what's going into the, the valve to, to what's going downstream. So I've got a... I got a picture here of, of uh, two injectors. It's actually the, the same injector. It's our one inch 1078. And uh, the injector on, on the left, uh, the uh, pressure is 25 PSI going into the injector. And downstream, uh, it's five PSI. So if you look at that big orange uh, uh, triangle, it's not really your true triangle, but uh, uh, the that that kind of illustrates the vac vacuum space, and it's it's pretty large. And at those pressures, that injector will uh, draw in about ninety six point seven gallons per hour. Wow, so that's 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 a good amount. And, and the reason we know that right is because there's a twenty point differential in psi. Right, that there's actually a. a a much larger, you know, you have you're you're at the maximum there. You know, you've got a more than a fifty percent. Uh, so, um, and uh, that injector itself at those pressures needs about twelve gallons a minute of water flowing through it. So, uh -huh. um, the big the big fallacy of uh, people think the more water I push through the injector, the better suction I'll get. Actually, um, those in, each injector has a specific, uh, what we call motor flow. It's the amount of water that uh, is required to flow through the injector. And you're not gonna get any more through that. So that's why uh, you wanna use a bypass at times. So on the right, we've got the same exact injector still at 25 PSI, but you know, let's say that uh, downstream maybe they shut off a block or something like that and and now we've got 20 psi uh downstream instead of the five and if you look at the vacuum space it's considerably smaller because you know we're running at about 25 uh percent uh of a pressure differential and if you look at our suction rate uh now it's been reduced by about two-thirds and we're we're uh, pulling in about 31.9 gallons per hour. Mm. So, you know, the, the moral of the story is, you know, the pressure, pressure, pre the pressure differential is key. Um, and actually, if you call me um, and have a question about, uh, you know, your, what you're doing, one of the first questions I'm going to ask you is, what are your pressures? And, uh, the nice thing about a Venturi, uh, mostly uh, 
it's uh, if you're having problems, it's it's a it's a you know about the pressure differential, or possibly you don't have enough flow going through the injector. But generally, it's it's you don't have enough pressure differential. So that's kind of key. So some other things when you're installing the injectors, um, you want to do uh, the same uh, pipe diameter as the injector or larger, never smaller, because uh -huh. you don't want to restrict that uh, flow in the injector. Um, and you want to um, make sure the valves and fittings are you if you use any isolation valves or anything like that, you want them the same size or larger than 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 the injector um and you should use use full flow valves so there's there's no restrictions and then um lastly uh you want to make sure that your all your fittings and and uh connections and the injector are compatible with the uh liquid you're injecting so we manufacture our injectors in polypropylene which is good for most of your ag chemicals, most of your, your uh, fertilizers you're injecting. But if you're injecting acids or uh, some of your chlorines, like some of your line cleaning products, you want to use a PVDF injector. And that's uh, the generic uh, name. You'll hear the trade name Hynar or Kynar. Those are those are trade names for PVDF, and that's polyvanilla forolane. But it's just a a more acid resistant, corrosive resistant uh, material. If you're injecting like a a wettable gypsum that's really highly abrasive, we really really recommend that you use a PVDF injector. And you can tell the difference between the two. The PVDF injector has a slight sheen to it, and it's heavier. And a poly injector, it's more of a matte finish to it. And if you put a poly injector in a bucket of water, it's going to float. A PVF injector it will sink the bottom to the bottom of the bucket. Ah, good, uh, good tips there too. I didn't know those two. Okay, and then uh, as far as uh, common installations, uh, a large majority of the installations are a are, are a bypass with some type of restrictor in the main line uh, during the fertilizer fertigation event with the bypass built built around you can see those little red uh, isolation valves in there so if if you don't want water going through that injector uh, when you're not fertigating you can shut that off and uh, isolate that and run that valve, valve right open uh, in the middle there uh, we've got a booster pump where we're creating that pressure differential um, and uh, with with the booster pump and uh, pushing it back into the main line so we're not affecting the flow or the pressure in the main line at all. And uh, we have, uh, I'll show you in a minute, uh, we've come out with a booster pump skid and I'll talk to you about that in just a second. And then you can also do it full flow. And yeah, uh, so so, John, I'm sorry, can you go back one slide? I'm excited to hear about the skids, but um, oh, sorry. other way. So when on the, on this, when would I use one more, please? Yeah. There we go. So when, so I look at uh, one is the bypass and three, uh, let's just call it inline. Um, how do I determine to go bypass or inline? Well, uh, bypass or inline, and, and actually, if you talk to me, I'm going to try to push you into bypass because it just makes life easier with the inline um first thing is uh you know the the injector can be a flow restrictor so the mode of flow of that injector and you can look up on our charts that's how much flow you're going to have downstream so uh -huh. like i showed you before that uh that one inch injector and let's say our line is going at 25 psi can you put up with 12 gallons a minute of flow at, at 25 PSI? Okay, well, if the answer is yes, great. Then the next thing we got to have is, do I have enough outflow of my emitters downstream to create that 
at least a 25% uh, pressure differential to create this suction that I need. And um, am I gonna have to use a metering valve and a flow meter to dial down that suction of that injector to get the rate? Because sometimes, and I do have a, a guy calls me every year, he uses a very large injector. He wants to inject a very small amount of material and I'm always telling him, well, you can do a smaller injector in a bypass and do that. And he goes, no, I want to do, because all my, all my lines are an inch and a half, and I want an inch and a half injector in there, and but I have to dial it down till it's almost shut off to give me that low suction rate. So that's... that's Yeah, no, I to totally get it now. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So that, that's, that's how we do it. Uh, the bypass, you have more flexibility and, and yeah. I can create yeah. a pressure differential. Totally. So yeah, let's see those skids. Okay, so we built built the skid um, because uh, for years, people would go off and build their own. Uh, we we had a manufacturer close by to Macy we worked with for years that uh, built skids and we just recommended those. Um, they went out of business, so there was a void in the market. Uh, we built a skid. Uh, we both have a high pressure and a low pressure unit. Um, and we, we engineered these skids. We, we designed them, put them on our test bench, ran them, um, went back again and designed them, uh, went back and, and altered the design. So we optimized them so they are the most efficient sized with that injector. And we build them uh, we have a one inch up to an uh, inch and a half. We have a high pressure unit for uh, uh, mainline pressures of uh, 55 PSI up to about 70. And then we have a low pressure unit from 25 to 55. And we're ensuring that the, the uh, material is, is fully mixed with the in unit. And uh, we're yeah, not, that's a nice setup. Wow. Nice setup. Nice, clean. Nice thing about it. It's got a flow meter so you can dial in what you need to to uh, inject. And uh, we've got pressure gauges on there. So you know what your mainline pressure coming into the end of the unit is what what the pressure is going out of the unit. So, you know, everything's working properly and, and uh, functioning. So why are we using a skid instead of a uh, a positive displacement pump. Main thing, uh, we're we're getting uh, uniform distribution and uh, fully mixed product uh, through the mixing veins and the, and the actual action of the venturi. Uh, we're a positive placement pump. We're uh, pulsing the material in under high pressure and hoping uh, that we've got enough mixing in the main line to uh, fully mix that product. So we have a uniform distribution. Um, with the flow meter and uh, metering valve on the skid, we can dial in exactly the rate we want, where with a positive placement displacement pump, we're restricted to the settings of the pump. So that, that may or may not uh, work in our application. Um, Maintenance of inventory, uh, there's fewer parts to fail, uh, less wear and tear. So there's less, less work uh, maintenance. With the actual uh, mechanical action of a, of a diaphragm pump, there's more components to wear, um, more stuff to uh, go out of calibration. And then because the actual injector is, uh, has no moving parts, once we, uh, set up with our pressures and all that, uh, we're going to consistently inject that amount of material every time, time after time. Where with a, with a, with a positive placement pump, a piston or a diaphragm, as that uh, pump wears, it's going to start walking out of calibration. And then, uh, you know, the booster pumps last and longer because we got uh, it's not exposed to uh, chemicals. It's running clean water through the pump. And uh, the positive placement pumps, even though they're designed to work with, uh, with chemicals, they uh, will wear you know, faster as time goes by. 
And then another way we can inject, and this is uh, uh, your display at World Ag. Yeah, I was going to say that looks familiar. You know, this is this is a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, pressure regulating valve in the in the main line there, and it's actually a pressure regulating gate valve. Um, and we've got a bypass with solenoids built around it, so it it can be automated real easy. And we've got the injector there in the middle. We've got a check valve on it, and actually you've got a uh, plastomatic valve on the flow meter, so you can using Jane Logic you can uh, adjust your flow and, and that. And the nice, you know, that's that's one way to do it to easily automate it. The uh, the uh, booster pump skid, uh, you can do the same thing where you can automate that with uh, with a Jane Logic uh, unit. And I hope that's the the name of the the units now. I'm, I'm I, it I'm, is. I'm, it is. You're still good. I'm still good. It's yeah. we haven't we haven't changed day. I, you know, I started thinking about that right after I said that that uh, that's there. So then the kind of last thing I wanted to couple things I wanted to go over real quick. Uh, we've gone over the injectors. Uh, a lot of people come back to me and say, wow, you make a lot of injectors in different sizes. And we do because uh, that way we can get you the right injector for your application. And the easiest way to do that is you go on our website, uh, www.mazy.net. And it's not a box. It's just up at the top. You'll see injector selector tool on that welcome screen. Click on that once. You register, uh, you know, for it real quick. You'll get a sign in and then uh, and a, uh, a login uh, password. You can change that password once you get it. And you can log on to the to the program. And what you'll get is is uh, first thing you'll see is is uh, selecting your method. So you've got mm -hmm. a, a booster pump, you've got the pressure reducing bypass, and you've got full flow. You select the one you need, and it's going to ask you questions of, hey, what's your flow? What's your pressure? How much do you want to inject? And a, and a few other things. And then it will give you, these are the recommended injectors. And, and this one happens... And you can you can give it the, that information in in imperial units, or you can do it in metric. So um, this screen actually is metric. So I apologize for all that, but uh, this will give you the injectors that are recommended for for your situation. It'll tell you what your inlet pressure is that you gave us, the outlet, the water flow that that is needed and the uh, suction rate. So you can make your determinations there. But over on the uh, right-hand side, it's the real neat stuff. Um, there's a box there that says, uh, send to uh, review for Maisie. If you click on that and in that comment box, you could write your questions, what they may be. Sometimes it's just, hey, uh, which, which injector you recommend I use or Maybe you have to, you know, hey, I'm uh, I'm injecting a, a material that has a pH of uh, four. Uh, should I use a poly injector? And no, you shouldn't. Uh, and uh, we will give you those answers. Um, and typically, John, how, how long does it take for you to get an answer back? Uh, 24 hours? 24 uh, hours. Uh, if if I see it, I jump on it. We have a, a tech support person. Uh, in uh, in the office uh, from uh, 7.30 to uh, 5, and uh, she will jump on it. Uh, Sylvia, um, she also is fluent in Sp Spanish, so uh, if you prefer your information in Spanish, um, give her a call at the office or, or email or, or, you know, hit that send it to Maisie and, you know, put it in the comment box. I'd prefer Spanish or, you know, that, and she would respond to that. Hmm. Uh, but uh, we try to get out these. I try to um, check it occasionally on the weekend because I know growers are trying to do what they're doing. And uh, 
if I can get back to them and get them going, um, you know, I do that. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's really handy. The nice thing uh, about the, uh, the tool too, if you're using a booster pump, it will tell you how much boost pressure you need and suggest the water horsepower of the pump you need. So when you're selecting your pump and all that, um, you can do that. Or you can buy your skid and it's all taken care of for you. But uh, on that. But um, another thing I wanted to touch on is proportional feed fertigation. Uh, Dr. Burke at uh, IRTC in Cal Poly um, has really promoted uh, uh, proportional feed fertigation. That's giving the plant uh, what it needs when it needs it. Um, it lends itself to uh, saving uh, automation uh, and it saves labor uh, costs and it improves fertigation efficiency. Um, it's just taking it to the next level. And um, things you need to look out for that. Uh, and you know another another thing about venturis worldwide, uh, your proportional feed uh, fertigation units, the majority majority of them use use a venturi. We supply our venturis to a lot of those OEMs that are building them. Um, but the reason why they're using them is because of the mixing and the fine control of the venturi. So, uh, you know, when you're looking for a proportional feed system, you you want to look at a, you know, equipment that is is you know has a reputation for quality and reliability. You want a accurate system. Uh, you want a well engineered system that's simple and easy to use, uh, so that. Your you or your staff have have the you know make sure that everybody has the ability to use it. You want to have safety alarms and alerts to tell you if the system's down, if if uh, your irrigation system's down, whatever the case may be. You want to have those alerts and alarms so you know you. So you want to have the connectivity to be able to reach up to the cloud so you can get texts or emails. However, you want to be notified. Uh, you want to have the historic use report uh, be able to generate that so you can, um, you know, uh, be able to do the, uh, the, the regulatory requirements of Sigma that's coming down the pike and that. And you want to uh, be able to reduce uh, fertilizer use. A proportional feed unit fused properly will most likely do that. And some of the units out here, I've got some pictures of, of uh, some of the units that are out here uh, made by different manufacturers. And then our, our skid can be used uh, that way too, um, if you automate it or you can just uh, use it manually. But uh, um, that's some of the units out there. Um, the field is growing every day. There's, there's more and more portional feed we're moving a lot of the uh, berries are being grown with proportional feed fertigation, and you're starting to see the veggies, but uh, starting up, but it's it's uh, there's growers uh, in the tree crops and vines starting to use it too. So it's that's that's the wave of the future. And Very nice. So then this is how we get a hold of you. That's how you get a hold of me. My email. Uh, my phone number isn't there. Uh, it should have been, been there. Um, my phone number is area code 661, my uh, 331 6500. Yeah, that's a really generous offer there for the, yeah. both the email yeah. and, the, uh, and the phone number. So if we have some questions about sizing or engineering or installation or maintenance or operation, you're, you're available. Give me a call, and and uh, I I tend to answer it all the time because it's easier just to take care of it then. Um, get kind of dirty looks from my wife, but you know she's been putting up with it for a long time. So yeah, it's no, anymore. John's a great resource. I know that firsthand. Uh, so please use them, uh, John. Thanks so much for coming on today and uh, taking us through fertigation. You know, I always learn something when uh, when I hear you uh, teach. So thank you. 
want to say thank you to all the viewers. Um, again, remember, we've got over 300 trainings now at the janesusa.com forward slash trainings page. And uh, all of them are free to learn from. Um, and John, as you know, we extract the video too and create podcasts out of these. So we've got a lot of people out there working and listening and learning at the same time. It's, it's really great. Um, so again, John, thanks very much for coming out thank, today. Thank you, Richard. I, I sure appreciate it and always enjoy it. Yeah. And thanks to all of you for watching. And uh, we're going to be off uh, with the three-day weekend coming up for the next few weeks. And then uh, we'll be hitting it heavy again in September. So watch for those emails. And uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.